Good morning. Goodness gracious me. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. Is this what it's like in your workplace? You should be a dentist trying to pull teeth here. Just turn to the guy on your left and say, Hazard, how are you doing? And the person on your right, guy or girl, get some energy in your life. Can I have slides, please? Well, whatever I say is without prejudice, okay? But I want to talk to you about what's happening in the world and some of the challenges that, that are coming at us from a perspective of technology, competition, challenges, legislation, all of those things. And what I'm coming to really understand with all of my research, as you can see, I'm quite an old buddy. I've been around for a little while. I'm a fanatic on people. I'm part of a mankind group called uh, Mankind Project. We do healing work for men. Yes, we do go for healing sometimes and coaching. And my goal from that, my vision from that goal is to bring around a world of more. More integrity, freedom, love, abundance, peace and joy. Because that, that's what I think we're missing in the world. And in, pre in preparing for the talk, uh, I spoke to one or two people. And the lady was saying that doing the work and having the tool of the law sometimes takes away the heart component. And I know once you get into the, into the battlefield, there's no emotion. Let's all do what we can do with, with, the, with the laws. But the challenge that you have in your industry is... It's quite stressful, it's quite lonely. You have three times the, the suicide rate of the norm. You have high levels of drugs, alcohol, we won't ask you who you are, but <laughs> all of those things that we take to reduce the stress and to, to avoid the pressure that we have. Because in many times you get used as a tool by the organizations and by the corporates and a big hammer to save money or avoid costs or you know we've got deep pockets wheel out whatever you until you run out of time or money the challenge also is technology i'm a techno kid from the days of ibm pc xt and with artificial intelligence now 40 percent or more of the lower jobs are going to be replaced by ibm watson already it's faster quicker cleaner cheaper doing research and that's today i can promise you in five to ten years time there's already systems, artificial intelligence systems, that can write marketing copy better than the world's best copywriters. You are under pressure. You'll have to learn to use technology. Where do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? Did you want, when you were a kid, did you want to be a lawyer? What vision did you have for yourself when you were growing up? So why should you listen to me? I've spent 40 years finding the most powerful stuff I can find in the world pertaining to human. I've helped companies double and quadruple their performance purely with weekend, two, three, four day interventions, changing and creating a balance from the head to the heart. You know the story about the old guy, he goes to the doctor, he's 94 in the shade, he says, doctor, doctor, you want to lower my sex drive, please. The guy says, 94, you want me to lower it? He says, please. He says, tell me a bit more. He says, you've got to lower it from here to here. <laughs> so, on a scale of 0 to 100, quickly think about your life. How much of your potential are you using? You know, I believe God makes incredible beings, conscious beings. How much generally of your potential do you kind of believe that you are using on a day-to-day -day basis. And write it down. You should have a pen and paper in front of you. Please write it down so that you can't just ignore it and avoid it and look away. Write something down on a scale of 0 to 100. How much of your potential do you believe you're using on a daily basis? And if you're up at the 90s or the 80s or 90s, I think you're feeling badly. So my challenge for you is why aren't you using a hundred? What stops you from using that full potential? The head and the heart. And what is it that stops your staff from using their full potential? I used to be a DJ, I used to have a day job and a night job. I loved my night job, I hated my day job. And so depending upon how you feel, you can either wake up and say, Good morning, God, or Good God, it's morning. 
recruit your staff to use their full potential because the future is about people. All of the soft, mushy stuff. And if you're going to be a leader and optimize your team, you're going to have to put the tools down, all the safe, simple, clear stuff, and get into the mushy, human, feelings kind of stuff. So please, will you all stand up? <laughs> and to get the morning going, Facilitator, 
that gets you more onto the board and the control of organizations. It's about people. The leaders of big organizations, one of the questions the headhunters ask is, when last did you cry? So you ask the man, when last did you cry? If it wasn't anybody not cried in the last year, anybody cried in the last year, let's use brave here. Men, if you didn't cry in the last year, you weren't a candidate for the job. Because the higher you go, the more it's about people. Less it's about knowledge, skill, and technical expertise. At the top, you are herding cats in the dark with one hand tied behind your back. You are going through people. It is through people that you will achieve your success. And the old days of force, command, conquer, and control are gone. In one little tweet, in one little Facebook, your behavior is public knowledge. And the moment you have to use force, you've lost the game. So let's look at where you have power. Where you do things has impact what you can be, do, and have. But if you want more power, go to what you do. If you want even more power, go to where, how we are doing it. The driver, as Simon Simonek says, start with why. Why are we doing this? And the youth of today want a, they want meaning. It can't just be because more money. I was at the JSC yesterday, and the guy saying the goal is to make double our turnover in five years. I said, greeder. Where's the person? Where's the human element beyond money? Because at the end of the day, when you die, no one's going to worry about the money part. And so for me, it was validation from somebody in my circle of, of relationships that I would acknowledge or experience that. And why is it important? It is because of this. When you die one day, and you move on to whatever you believe, if you go down that tunnel of light, you'll be met by Jesus or your, whoever your avatars or, or higher beings are. And you'll be asked three questions. Number one, how much wisdom did you gain while you were dancing on this life? Two, how much love did you bring? Three, are you ready to receive back what you perpetrated on others? Not as a punishment, but to wake you up. How would you fare on those three questions? Because who are you at the end of the day? If you're just a lawyer, you're constrained by that identity. But if you're something bigger, here to bring what? Freedom, love, abundance, peace and joy, happiness? What does each day of your work bring? So for you and your staff, what kind of skills do you need in the next 10 years? I used to, I used to have a computer company in 1990-odd. I was talking to the guys at IBM and we were chatting. And he said, in 10 years time, 50% of the jobs we will be doing, we haven't invented yet. And I didn't understand that. I couldn't actually grasp what he meant. But now I know. What, what kind of skills are going to be needed in 10 years' time? With, who can give us absolute certainty what skills are going to be needed? But I can tell you with absolute certainty what kind of mindset is going to be needed. And so what do you do each day to build that mindset of your, yourself or your staff? What kind of development or training an optimization do you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? When I had my computer company a long time ago, nearly 30 something plus years ago, we did staff training every day, 45 minutes, every single morning. Everybody from the T girl to the top. And it's now coming into the world now only. There's a company called Next Jump. You can go online and find them. They have a process called the Deliberately Developed Mentor. And that means half the days for growth, development, training, coaching, half the days for business. I think it's a bit extreme. You know, can you, could you give half a day to, to grow your people? But could you give one hour or 45 minutes every morning and grow those people incrementally? Because the bar has been raised. You know, do you know who, ran the, who was first to run the four minute mile? Did somebody say Bannister? It wasn't him. It was his coach. 
His coach first saw it and believed it and got Roger to then do what he had to do to break it. And as we know, it was a world first. Medical science said it's impossible. All the doctors, all the professionals said cannot be done. But they eventually did it. Because he managed to change Roger's mindset and belief system. Do you know that today, 17-year-olds are breaking the four-minute mile? Every day, the bar gets raised. Every day, there's more competition. Every day, you have to keep sharpening and growing and building. And if you're going to be a leader that gets the best out of your organization, there are four levels. It starts with the people. Not much is going to happen without people. In the, del the, the del developmental organization, Next Jump, they now have a philosophy that when they hire you, they will never fire you. You can leave, but they guarantee they will never fire you. They will grow you, build you, develop, me, develop you until you succeed. Because people are the, the subset of teams, and the future is about teamwork, connection, communication, <coughs> collaboration. <coughs> That's this mushy stuff, understanding, emotional intelligence. And I was reading, they're going to, they wanted to do a thing where they were going to filter lawyers before they went into to studies for law, whether they had emotion, sufficient emotional intelligence. Because IQ will get you on the field, and I'm sure you guys in this room have got lots of that. EQ is going to keep you on the field the higher you go, because it's not your IQ, it's about your people skills. How do you get the best out of people? And then the level higher than that is AQ or resilience, your adversity intelligence, because you might be up there, but can you take a punch? And can you keep standing and keep going? Number one skill you want to build into yourself and your people is that the human component and the ability to bounce back. Is the future getting easier or harder? Anybody home? Anybody? <laughs> easier or harder? Less competitive, more competitive. What kind of training have you done to grow your people to be stronger, faster, harder? We do all the skill sets. We do nothing about the mindset. So these are the constraints that we have in an organization. If you're going to build a high performance team, if you're going to double, think about doubling your business. Some you have control over, some you don't. But if you're going to double your performance of your organization, there are six areas, proven, validated, academically researched. I can give you this stuff. In fact, I'm going to give you a CD in exchange for your card. But there are six areas that you can work on that will optimize your organization. Plus, now we've got the younger generation that want a whole lot of different stuff. And there's some incredible stuff by Simon Sinek. I think it's called Empathy. One is Empathy. Somebody connected with me on, on LinkedIn. Who was it? A lady. Did you go look at the video, that Simon Sinek video? There's incredible stuff around how to manage the new consciousness. <coughs> Imagine, anybody know about the indigo kids and those kind of things? Imagine that a new kind of consciousness has been born into our world where we no longer fight. There's no longer the conflict. And I think a lot of the younger generation are like that. They're worried about longevity, sustainability, meaning. Stuff that's important that we've given up. But the things that drive them is their mastery and development and growth. And it needs to be incrementally optimized versus in a year's time we'll tell you how well you did. It needs to be like every two or three months, feedback, coaching, interaction if you're going to get the best out of them. Some people like the challenge, some people are scared of challenges and it depends whether you've got a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Your goal and challenge is to build growth-oriented mindsets. Anybody got kids? I'm just very nervous of time. I'm going to give you the most valuable secret you can do to, to optimize your child. Have you ever told your child you're so clever? Do you ever say that? You know, you are, I love you, you're so clever. What happens the day they're not clever and they can't do what they're trying to achieve? What happens to their identity when they're not clever? And so, to keep that clever... Identity, they are last steel cook or cheap. Adults do it too. If you're going to really love and care for your children, build in and appreciate and validate the things that you want. I'm proud of your resilience. I'm proud of your creativity. I'm proud of your determination. I'm talking about kids, but I'm talking about your staff as well. 
if you're going to recognize and validate them. Validate the things, the skills, the mindset qualities that are going to get them going. I'm proud of how hard you worked until you solved it. And we're going to give you a little taste right now. Please tell me what the fish is thinking. Say what? He's happy. Cool. Anybody else? What's the fish thinking? Speak up. Yes? He's free. Cool. I'm a superhero. Interesting. I want to go to the bigger pond. I hope there's water in that. I hope there's water. Risk mitigation, eh? Yes? Say again. Greener pastures. Interestingly for me, there are some people that say the positive things. I'm growing, I'm going, bigger, better. There are other people that say, I hope I don't fall in between. <laughs> and how, how that shows up in your work has a huge impact. And so I've spent 40 years, I don't know why this is making such a little noise. I've spent 40 years putting together a system, a process that I call ClearX. If you're going to optimize your organization, these are six things that you need to optimize, improve, focus on to build a high-performance exponential organization. And the first one is culture. Think of your organization. If your organization was an animal, what would it be? And why? A panther, why? Okay. So you have a good organization. Yesterday they said to me it will be like a tanker because it takes so long for anything to happen and it can't do. <laughs> and the other one, they said a lion because it's arrogant, in denial and a whole lot of stuff. But culture is the foundation of how it, what happens here. And so when you bring a new person into your organization, your existing culture will be impregnated into their mindset within less than a week. So they took some monkeys, put them in a, in a cage, put up a step ladder with some bananas on the top. Hard question, what are the monkeys going to do? Go for the bananas. As they went, they sprayed them with high pressure fire hoses, pain. They quickly learned, do not go for the bananas, cause it's pain. They took one of those monkeys out, put a new guy in. He comes in, checks it out, says, how's the guy? Oh, bananas. Where's he going? Going up the ladder. The monkeys stop him because it's pain. So he quickly learns, don't go. He doesn't know why, but don't go. They eventually will rotate all of those who are physically sprayed with water out of the machine and bring new guys in who each time will go for the bananas and get stopped. And eventually you'll have monkeys in the system that were never sprayed, but they never go for the bananas. Why? I don't know, it's just, that's just the way it happens around here. And that's culture. The challenge is to change your culture is very hard. You can't change culture directly. You do people, teams, leadership. The second is leadership. Who in here is a leader? I'm very worried. Why would all the hands up? Really? If you don't have an identity that I am a leader, you'll never step up and do those kind of things. And what we really need is we need what I call limitless leaders on every level. Because you have leaders in your organization that are social leaders. They don't have the title or the position, but let me tell you, they have influence and impact. And they will, they will lead a tribe and control that tribe ahead of your power and influence. So you need to find ways that you can step up, but you need that identity of I am a leader. Anybody know Gallup's research engagement? Millions spent on, billions spent on research. Engagement is a, is a leadership issue. It's what you do to get the people engaged in the workplace. Typically, there's about between, in South Africa it's high, 35%, up to 35% of people are disengaged, unhappy terrorists undermining you. Between 15 to 25% are positive and positively engaged and others in the middle are doing what they have to do to get paid at the end of the month. The presentation will be available for you guys as well. The A is appreciative approach. So instead of problem solving, what do you want less of? What's the problem? Appreciative inquiry says let's focus on something positive and what we want more of. What brings life versus what was the issue? Because if I say to you, what's the big problem with you? What's human nature? We shut down and block. If I say to you, what do you want more? 
of in your workplace. It energizes and optimizes and brings new possibilities. The right mindset, the work from uh, Professor Stoltz that I did the, the resilience work with at the International Society for Performance Improvement in the States, he's now got this whole thing on mindset. If you could see the mindset of people, would you use that as part of your employment practice? Because nothing worse than having highly skilled people with bad attitudes, hey? Anybody heard of Zappos? Tony Shea, if you haven't, go online, find Zappos. They're a little online company selling shoes and clothing. A billion dollars a year, ba, 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 billion, bought by Amazon. When you go to join that organization, first interview, do you have the skill set? Second interview, do you fit our culture? Third interview, do you fit the team's culture where you're going? They don't care how good a skill set you are, if you don't have the culture fit in the heart for the way the organization is, goodbye. That fit for your culture is vital. 6% of a system controls a system. In biology, you have biological systems in your workplace. That, that 35% or 25% of disengaged people can smash your organization's culture. If you're a leader, you can be up to 8.4 times, times more valuable as a leader. Mindset is the new, most powerful thing that you can use to build in your organization. Because that then gives you the power to execute. Because who's got a strategy? Business strategy? Big business strategy stuff? They go and spend millions every year? The problem isn't the strategy. The problem is getting it executed. Right mindset, right attitude, right actions, right teamwork, right trust levels to get execution to happen. And that's how we help companies double and quadruple their performance. So going back, loop, loop, looping back to the original thing with three times the level of suicides and drugs and that. Depression is a multi-billion dollar business. <coughs> From the work that I do, in, I do personal transformation is my core background. Deep, deep dive, healing and transformation. Uh, I have one theory that depression is anger without enthusiasm. And on the other side, it is a chemical process. There's, there's um, shampoos that you can use that will infect you, there's food that will affect you, there's like, some people are gluten intolerant, it affects you. But for most of the time, it's a mindset thing. In my 40 years of research, 88% of all issues is mindset. Do you know, belief, for me, belief creates reality. Anybody ever heard of placebo? You know, there's a nocebo as well. There's actually a placebo institute now because up to 50% of the positive results from drugs, which are really sugar, sugar tablets, is through belief system. So we have very, very powerful mindsets. We can think ourselves into depression. We can think ourselves out of it. But you have to be conscious and aware to be able to manage what's happening in this biological computer. Most people haven't had training on how to manage that, that thinking. We have hundreds of thousands of thoughts every day, and most of the time it's the same stuff we thought yesterday. And as much as I'm in the mindset business, there are times that I wake up and my mind is just spinning. That's the biggest challenge, is this computer system here. I, I believe that we have things called thought viruses, where you can be thought by a thought. Everybody, anybody ever been thought by a thought? You know, it's, it's, it's like, where, where does this thought process come from? If you're not conscious and aware, you might then believe that thought. But if you're a bit more conscious and aware, you can say, but hold on a second, it's not relevant for me right now. But you have to be awake. The problem is you don't know that you're asleep. So how do we get rid of depression? The very first thing is dopamine. You know why the kids are on their phone? Because every time they get a like or a hello, they get a hit of dopamine. A positive experience, a reward, pleasure seeking. Where in your organization do you have this positive reward? Not without having to wait a, a year to get some kind of validation, recognition, and appreciation. In my research that I do in organizations, the number one, number one, primo, number one, lack of recognition, validation, appreciation. So, set stretch goals. 
create a, a, a hullabaloo around the recognition, validation and achievement and encourage and grow people. The second part is, is serotonin. And I think the biggest challenge we have in the youth today is low, low self-worth, low self-esteem and high levels of learned helplessness. Now, learned helplessness, have you ever seen a, an elephant in the circus? How strong is an elephant? 100 people? 100 men? It stands there, this huge thing with this little rope around its leg. Could it break away? Could it? Why doesn't it? It's been taught not to. It can't. It's been taught can't. Because as a little baby elephant, they put a huge chain around it and they're trying to get away, trying to get away, trying to get away. And eventually it learned how to come. And it got a thought virus and program says you can't. And so it gives up and it gave up. Humans have the exact same thought virus. So how do you build confidence into your people? How do you set those challenges that are beyond the money, just the money, 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 where there's meaning and purpose and growth and challenge for them? And the very last and the scariest one for many people is oxytocin. Core human need is to love and be loved. Finish. I don't care who you are from the billionaires down to the poor people. Core human need. Touch, care, connection, love. Who would rather have money than love? Or power than love? I'm not talking about the kind of love with your neighbor now, hey? We're talking about... Love, like, I had a little grandson, a three-year-old grandson. I could not believe that I could have such love for, for another human being. So, we need connection. We need some kind of belonging. It's cool. Look at Maslow's stuff. We need to have something that goes beyond being in the army and it's military and do not touch. That's why people go for massages and healing. We need that connection. We need that human touch. So let's see how good your brain is. I, I still think you're stuck. Draw the nine dots. Draw on your piece of paper quickly. Draw, draw the nine dots. Let's see how awake you are. Draw those nine dots just like that. And here is your challenge. And you've got, you've got seven minutes left. Join all nine dots with four straight lines. You may not lift up your pen once you begin. Join all nine dots with four straight lines. You may not lift up your pen once you begin. So I'm going to give you a minute. If you know it, don't show the other people. Because some people have done this before. So we want to teach them how to fish rather than give them the fish. Join all nine dots with four straight lines. You may not lift up your pen once you begin. <coughs> if you're going to become a high performance person and team, you're going to be able to think in new ways. So look at your neighbor's drawings. Have a look at their drawing. What do you notice in their drawing? What do you notice about their drawing? They're stuck in a box. Have a look at most drawings. You're stuck in the box. You're being run by programs from your childhood. Stay in the lines. Stay in the box. And you're meant to be an adult, a thinking adult. I hope. And here's the challenge. Einstein said that we cannot solve the problem at the same level of thinking that the problem was created. The problem is you have been run by thought viruses and old programs, you're not even aware of it. And that's why part of you are not using your full potential. So there's only one way that you're going to get out of this box. Number one is you have to push past. You have to push past your comfort zone. You have to push past your old values. You have to push past your constraints. With love and with fun. This isn't a forced deal. This is power. Two, three, four. Imagine you could get your whole team to think like this. You 
You've got to go beyond this, beyond the box. Only in this manner are you going to be able to become future fit and be relevant in the new world. So just for a moment, imagine that you're using your full potential. Imagine that you've unleashed your limitations and are using your full, full potential. Now, Amy Cuddy on YouTube from one of the TED Talks it talks about power poses. The, the one power pose is like this, and it will start to chemically change the dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, and the other one is like this. So everybody, please stand up. Close your eyes. You'll be safe, I promise you'll be safe. Stand up, close your eyes, and get this vision, get this picture of using your full potential. And when you've got that picture, put your hands up. Stand in this power pose, either like this or like this. If you want to be Superman, you can be this. If you want to be Superwoman, you can be this. Get the picture. Get the picture of using your full potential. Living how you'd love to live. And then get into it. Hands up. And hold it there. Make the picture brighter. Make the sounds brighter, louder, the positive whatever inside, saying something positive to you. And build it. And take it and just double it. And double it. And double it. Bringing love, abundance, peace, joy, freedom, whatever it is that you're here on the planet to bring. And double it one more time. And inside, say to yourself, I unleash my full potential, passion and power. Just quietly inside. Make a decision today. An irrevocable decision. I'm a powerful being of light. I bring love, whatever you want to bring. And so it is. And one more time, a chance to dance. Open your eyes.